I'm Brett McComas with Target Walleye and today's top five presented by Seafoam is all about the spring walleye run on the Rainy River because she's been kicking them out. Let's dive on in. Where I live in central Minnesota, our walleye season is closed from the end of February until the middle of May. So unless you want to chase around a bluegill all spring, <sighs> bluegills. <laughs> you either road trip to another state with open seasons to spend your money elsewhere across the state borders, or you Baja North to the rainy river on the Minnesota-Ontario border as soon as the ice gives way. Every spring, zillions of walleyes make their annual run from Lake of the Woods, up current, up river, into the rainy river to spawn, and if the conditions are right, meaning water temp, water clarity, flow, etc., it can be some of the most ridiculous fishing of the entire year, both for high number days and quality of fish with a shot at truly fish of a lifetime. Walleye pro Will Pappenfuss zipped up the other day to knock the rust off, knock, knock the dust, knock the dust and the rust off of everything <laughs> before his upcoming Lake Erie NWT stop. And his buddy AJ kicked off the morning right off the bat with a 31 incher. You see that scar on that thing? It looks like if you took one of those automotive dent puller outers, it would buff right out. And sounds like they ended up with multiple fish breaking that dirty 30 inch mark, which is just ridiculous for anywhere in the walleye world, but especially when we're talking about something that is not one of the Great Lakes or a Great Lakes tributary. Oh, and their last fish of the day was a 10.18 pounder that's giving AJ the side eye. Hmm. Now, I don't know about you, but I can only handle myself seeing so many big fish pictures scrolling down past my newsfeed before I either have a mental breakdown or I need to Baja hit the road and get in on the action too. Which brings us to number two. Rainy River's early catch and release only walleye season ends on April 14th already. Too soon, too soon. <laughs> so I made the irresponsible decision to play hooky from work yesterday and zip up there to get in on the fun. And it was one of the best worst decisions I've made in quite some time. We zipped up for a day trip, eight hours in the vehicle for one day of fishing, but we managed to put 82 walleyes on the clicker. It was absolute madness. We didn't get any of those true rainy river giants, like those 30 to 32 inch just behemoths. But man, we had dozens and dozens of fish, no joke, in the 24 to 26 inch range, a handful of 27s up to 28 inchers, and multiple doubles, which was hectic in a really good way. Kind of a little one compared to the average. <laughs> In case you didn't know, the river is essentially split in half down the middle. Half of the side is in Minnesota, United States. The other half of the river is in Ontario, Canada. We fished on both, but it blows my mind how few of people are willing to spend a few extra bucks and get a day license in Ontario to be able to fish the whole river instead of being stuck on one side of an imaginary fence. We just can't up and go to Canada. Now, I think the main reason is most folks probably just don't know the rules, the different regulations once you cross that imaginary, or I guess it's a real line, but once you cross that imaginary line, the different rules you have to follow, the different equipment and things you have to have in your boat, and just stuff you need to pay attention to, so they stay on the U.S. side so that they don't have to worry about that extra hassle. But I've also talked to a lot of people who their main reason for not getting an Ontario license and fishing that other side of the river as well is because they are not allowed to have beer in their boat or drink on the water. So they say the beer is worth half the river and maybe half the bites. Because <laughs> interestingly enough, the Canadian side, it's north facing, it warms up a little faster. You can see on the shoreline, there's still snow on the US side and it might look like a field on the Canadian side. But there's also a lot of like little islands and holes and stuff that it just seems to me like it has more structure over there. Less people, warmer water, more fish. So I like a cold one as much as the next guy but I will absolutely crush waters all day instead if it means I can do this different kind of cheers 
all day over and over again. No matter what side of the river you're on, you can expect to be around a ton of fish, but also a ton of people since there's not many open options for fishing this time of year. You get a little bit of bumper boat action going on, and my buddy Brent Lopez had a good analogy. He said it reminded him of this episode of Spongebob called the Hookie, which is hilarious. But like I said, it's an incredible fishery and definitely worth the hustle and bustle. So let's talk a little bit more about how we caught them, which brings us to number three. And when you're talking about walleye fishing on the Rainy River, a lot of folks like to anchor up or set up in deeper holes, 15, 20, 25, even 30 foot holes, and wait for those fish to pile in and come to them. Or the other option is slip drifting with the current along the main river channel edge, you know, maybe 10 to 15 feet, kind of depending what section of river you're under. I grew up a bass fisherman, so I don't like sitting around when I walleye fish. I like to catch them as shallow as they will possibly let me. And yesterday, we caught all of our fish in seven feet of water or less. I would say the majority of them were in about four and a half to five feet of water skinny water up in the snags the stumps the sticks the rock if we weren't losing jigs we weren't catching fit well we we're catching fish but we we're catching a lot more fish when we had to retie often we even actually caught some fish as shallow as two to three feet of water casting right up near the bank right where it dips from say two to four feet so shallow that when you set the hook the surface boils from a fish rolling on the bait which is just such a blast when you're walleye fishing and kind of not heard of in walleye fishing because you're typically targeting them out deeper. So the water's really low right now and there's hardly any current flow at all. The least flow I've seen on the river in the 13 or 14 years I've been fishing it. We started out with quarter ounce jigs and we caught a few fish, nothing crazy, but as soon as we bumped up a little bit lighter, eighth ounce jigs, it was game on, which brings us to number four. We were fishing with 8th ounce VMC Neon Moon Eye jigs with a variety of plastics, constantly switching up colors, sizes, profiles to see what they wanted and what was working the best. And it was the Bee Fish and Tackle Authentics Moxie that was by far our top producer in the boat, even more so than paddle tails, ring worms, swim baits, anything like that. And the fish were just annihilating it. I mean, straight up inhaling it, when you'd get that fish in the boat, you couldn't even see the bait until you opened its mouth because they were <laughs> popping it in so deep that uh, we stuck with Moxie's most the rest of the day. And it was my buddy Christian Hoffman who really dialed in the jigging cadence and I wish he would have told us a little sooner because he probably caught 45 of our 80 something fish. Looks like they're biting my jig. <laughs> but they wanted it really slow. It was not the pops and rips. It was just a slow lift or a slow sweep and following it back down, letting that bait, that lighter eighth ounce jig kind of hang in the water column or sometimes even sit on bottom for a couple of seconds and just barely flutter off bottom before doing another sweep and they would demolish it, which is so weird because you'd think if they were hitting that hard that they'd be game for popping that bait a foot or two, three feet, but nope, slow and steady won that race. <laughs> Playing around with different colors always seems to pay off on the Rainy River. Usually some combination of white, pink, chartreuse, and orange will work day in and day out out there. But that day it was very noticeable when we were getting out fished like three, four, five to one on the sassafras color the first half of the day. And then when that bite tapered off, my buddy Hoffman switched to a black with kind of a purple flake in it. And he went back to back to back <laughs> casts over and over again until we switched and threw those in there as well. Cause we were following him up with whites, pinks, sassafras, not getting bit as he continued to set the hook. So he got to pad those numbers a little more on us. <laughs> So make sure you're switching it up, especially if you got multiple people in the boat. All do something a little different until you can't take it and you need to play catch up to your buddy. Now, one of these years, I'm gonna hit the Rainy River on Minnesota's fishing opener because it's usually still chock full of fish, but by that point, the rest of the state is all spread out on the other 10,000 options to catch a walleye. But in the meantime, there's another bigger option on the Rainy River. 
Now it's tough to beat a walleye bite that's that good on the Rainy River, but we heard that the sturgeon were absolutely on fire because they also come pushing in from Lake of the Woods up into the Rainy River to spawn coming up here as the water warms up. So we decided to make a little, uh, a little mission, a little side mission, and we had only a two hour window to get it done, zip out there, try to catch my cousin his first sturgeon ever before we had to hit the road and get back. And uh, it took about, I don't know, 15 minutes before uh, catching our first one. And these are, these are big fish, obviously, as you can see in the picture, but these are by no means big by Rainy River Sturgeon standards. But I think we caught six or seven of them in a little less than a two hour window. And the live scope footage is absolutely crazy. They looked like schooling suspended crappies just dumping into the river. And you're only seeing a 30 to 50 or maybe 80 foot snippet. It was miles and miles of sturgeon stacked like panfish everywhere you looked. Every boat we saw was hooked up. It was just a crazy experience. And that's a bite that even after this walleye season closes, there's some opportunities to get in on. And I will be back specifically for a sturgeon trip because catching a fish that your arms are so sore afterwards that you're gonna take a little 15 minute break, we don't have that in fresh water. <laughs> like this dude right here, if you look at the hash marks up top, that thing's about six feet long. All right, a little long-winded, I know, but that wraps up this week's top five. A big shout out to Seafoam for keeping us running smooth and making my truck happy on eight, nine, 10 hour round trips all the dang time, chasing those hot bites and fishing for a lifetime. Now, if you want more walleye and ice fishing related content like this, sign up for our free Target Walleye emails at targetwalleye.com and I'll see you back in seven.